Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Marcello Central School District Board of Education meeting for tonight, Monday, September 20th, 2021. This time I would ask everyone to please stand and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, at this time, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to add personnel item 7.7. .7. I received a copy with your agenda this evening. Okay. I have a motion. Janine? Second? Second. Any, any questions? Just um, wanted to, I, it's funny, I said last week I try never to do this, but I've done it to be zero, but um, this is a situation where we've been able to expand our strength and conditioning program by moving some things around slightly so that we're staying within the same budget. And if we don't approve these folks now, the fall season's almost over. So I only ask on behalf of the kids that they'll have this opportunity. So thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Item three, recognition. Um, I had hoped to have uh, our county legislator, Julia Keen, and she was going to try to, to join us this evening. So she may either be running late or she may have had something come up. I know she has some family commitments tonight, but later on in our agenda, you're gonna be accepting a gift donation uh, from our county of $10,000 for our agriculture program. And um, I, I was, sort of taken aback when I heard we were getting this money and I thought, wow, how wonderful. And uh, in talking with Caitlin Eaton, who's also here with us this evening, one of our teachers, her and Joe Killian, our other ag teacher, are gonna be talking a little bit during our building project um, update. Um, Caitlin actually wrote a letter and reached out asking if the county would like to make a donation. And she, I think, threw out $5,000 and they came back with 10. So that's my kind of bargain. Um, so, <laughs> Julie is, is a wonderful advocate, former school board member, and I know would have been really thrilled to be here this evening um, to make the presentation herself. So if she shows up, maybe we could give her a minute. Uh, but also thank you to Caitlin for just throwing it out there and trying to um, find some funds to, to continue with our growing agricultural program. I also wanted to mention the team of people um, that have brought our track and field area to fruition. We've had our first games and I listed them all here. CNS Companies, King and King Architects, David Walbridge, which is our site contractor, ATER, who put the turf down, Raquel Osborne, our landscape architect. Everybody worked so well together to make that happen and coordinate it. And we were able to come in on time, actually ahead of time and on budget. And we have a beautiful facility for our kids. And of course, None of it would have happened without the amazing support of the Marcella School community uh, for approving the project in the first place. Great, great. Item four, presentations. The quickest COVID update ever. We're doing weekly testing. Uh, it started, we actually pulled it off and it went fairly smoothly. We'll be doing round two tomorrow. Um, we had no no positives at all in our pool, which is wonderful. Those tests are taken daily to the lab because we are able to do symptomatic testing. And Ryan Riefler has uh, really helped us coordinate that so that we can make that happen. Um, we are continuing to have no transmission in school, but cases do continue to walk in. Um, at some point, we may have some transmission at school. I would say eating, lunch is our our biggest liability just because people are unmasked. Symptoms all seem to be mild, you know, mainly just cold symptoms at this point. So that's good news. And the quarantine guidelines being much less stringent, we're not having many quarantines, which is also really good news that kids can continue to come to school. So that's what's happening. We're continuing to chase it and manage it. So, so that the, uh, the 
symptomatic testing, we do transport to the lab. Yes, sir. And the, the weekly testing, the pool testing, they pick up, correct? Correct. Any other questions on that? How much symptomatic testing are we doing? Um, it's varying. Last week, except for one day, we did transport tests. I don't think more than five. Um, today, we transported four samples. Um, you, you will hold them and wait to the end of the day? Yes. So you're not going to them back, correct? At 3.30, I usually send a message to Ryan and let him know whether we have them or not. And then um, Morgan is on at night designated as our transporter, but they can work it out. Ryan did the first run with him because I wasn't sure how parking would be and all those things. So um, it's pretty smooth down there. So I think I think that'll go well. And there are families that did not originally sign up and consent for diagnostic testing, but once they're faced with the dilemma, they quickly get into the portal and create an account and sign the paperwork because it's a lot easier for us to do it here than them to have to take a sick child somewhere else. So I think it's going to be a great benefit to our community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions regarding COVID? Building project update. So just one more time quickly, you're you're obviously um, you have a lot of approvals in front of you this evening. So remember that we're looking for authorization of funding of the capital reserve, 1.7 million. Um, that money is coming from a variety of places. We've had some COVID savings. We sold a building. We had some uh, federal money. There's no better use for federal money than something that's going to be around for 60 years so, or more. So uh, I think a great use of some of that money. Um, you're also going to be voting on our speaker, which is State Environmental Quality Review Act. And we're looking for you to declare that project as unlisted, meaning until we get into what the parking lot will entail when they're finally designed, um, we won't really know how much earth will be disturbed. And that is the game changer for whether this is a type one or a type two. So it is very legal to start in as an unlisted and then to go forth and um, continue when you find out if it's a type one or type two to do the necessary things associated with either. Uh, and a smart way to go because you don't want to classify it as something that you don't need to because there's a lot of extra work, which means money that goes into the paperwork and the processes. So we'll wait and see how things go with the planning. And then the third thing you'd be authorizing is that December 7th vote. So remember, it's called a special meeting, but that's actually the vote on the building project. And just a quick refresher, we're looking for the 99-2000 vintage roof replacements, the redesign of that Mustang Hill and the high school parking. And the alternate listed will be renovations to DMS locker rooms, the replacement of the balance of the original windows in DMS. That would be the auditorium and the old gym. And then we're also looking to do something with our ag facility which is why I asked Caitlin and Joe to be here this evening. So there's there's four components, and we aren't sure exactly how we're going to list them at this juncture, but what we believe is that we'll be including infrastructure, that site infrastructure, the rough-in of any of the utilities so that we can then actually place structures. So that site work will be a must in the project because if that's not done, we'll never be able to put anything anywhere. And then the facilities would be a sugar shack for the production of maple products. Uh, it would be a greenhouse and it would be a, a sawmill slash pole barn type structure for, for storage of equipment. So that when we have crops, et cetera, you can also have associated tractors and equipment that the students would use and work on uh, those things with. We're looking at two possible sites uh, one site is the one that we took the parking lot out of, but Tony and Ryan actually scoped out a site that we might actually prefer. And that is one behind where the current staff parking lot is across from the high school. It's tucked in nicely. There's a nice tree line around the back and you actually get better sun during the day. 
for any crop fields, and then it leaves that green space for KCH to use more of. So we're exploring both sites and the implications. What I am at, what I asked Caitlin and Joe to do is to take a moment and to just talk a little bit about um, how they're thinking about building the program and how those facilities play into that plan. So Caitlin, if you recall, was has been a science teacher here. And this past year, I asked her to shift into a new position, taking up the, the career and tech ed component that's required at the middle level as an agriculture teacher. And then Joe, of course, was hired at the high school um, as the agriculture teacher a few years ago. So I'm going to turn it over to them. So I appreciate you having me here this evening. I am Joe Killian, and I am the agriculture teacher at the high school. I'm half of the career and technology teaching program at the high school.
One thing I think we instill, uh, whether it's our mission or not, at Marcellus is the lifelong learning. And uh, so our agricultural facility will obviously be focused on what students here at the district, uh, but it's also going to be open up to the community. Uh, because again, if they don't choose to pursue you know, a career precisely, uh, they can always pursue them as a body or an interest in our high school or whatever job they they do from K to five. With that being said, um, all of our amenities would be open and available for the community, whether it be milling logs that someone might drop on the property, or a lot of people like to decorate for for people staff in the spring, but we don't necessarily have the facility to handle the staff and we need to do that for the staff for them. And so again, the learning opportunities aren't just going to be limited to our students or any new class time, but uh, our students will be also made available for students. Uh, a lifelong learners. Now that's the um, So I, I think it's wonderful. I love the idea of, um, you know, all of the, if you can bring in, so interdisciplinary, I love that. But how do we get all of our kids to filter through this if they don't sign up specifically for an ad course? So how do you incorporate it? So we Is there anything like so for the group of students that are in the high school now that maybe didn't have that seven and eight opportunity for exposure? That is there going to be anything like extracurricularly for the kids who have that tight schedule that maybe aren't on a course where they could fit ag in? Sure. Mm -hmm. education uh, surrounds uh, three circle knowledge. So that means that the component one of them is class instruction, the other component is what's called certified agriculture experience. It's a, a work experience for all kinds of purposes in that fashion. And then there's also an FFA. Uh, and I say the premier leadership organization throughout the United States, that's actually the largest leadership organization there is. Um, and all students are about, um, eligible and allowed to participate in FFA even at this time. With the pandemic and everything that's been going on, it's been a struggle, but obviously, hopefully, I'll see this one back to normality. Um, we can hope to build it. And, and the reality, too, is I think we're going to build once we start seeing these facilities and amenities. Um, things were a little bit slow when we were in the middle school. If we came back up in the high school and they saw the new job, they saw the new uh, the kitchen that we have, um, just it just has exploded. Um, so, um, we expect that we'll continue to explore it if we start having these uh, additional events that we are expecting. Very exciting. Thank you. I think, you know, as I reflect back on my education, I think anything that was either a change of scenery or hands on learning is so engaging for kids. And those are the things that I can remember most and my kids remember most. So thank you so much for your hands work and your vision incorporating K through 12. I do think like when you're saying that three STEM component and that FFA being a large group that maybe you could do something with kids at uh, some extracurricular that aren't throughout the um, their academic day. But 
one thing I would just think as like a very, you know, as this all is kind of new concepts to a lot of parents and to kids that 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 label FFA is going to, like, we have to brand it in a way that it makes it seem like it's for every kid, not just future partners, you know? So somehow, like, I think that's got to be something we're sensitive to because we don't want, we want to show how every student can benefit from them, from these opportunities. So just, just that just talking about that. So. I, I think, um, to your point, I think folks that are younger than us, <laughs> um, are much more aware of the farm to table concept and having that ability to see more of the the rel you know how it actually works. Yeah. I think would be kind of a draw for some of these things. Right, like where our food comes from. Yeah, yeah. 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 They were much more interested in that than I ever was. Right. I just think that it, that would be something that I could see so many kids really like enjoying as long as they felt like it was really presented to like it's for everyone it's not somebody who wants a future in agriculture or just you know that's going to own a farm or is going to own a restaurant or something like that but every kid could benefit from that process or just being exposed to those types of experiences just to develop different learning styles and strategies and things like that so i just think it's something that you got to spin to market it so that it is Something that every kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, as part of a larger conversation that we've had at the department, um, and I think again, as we continue to grow the agriculture program, we will have more discussions uh, changing the paradigm that's happening simultaneously with outside and around the world. And that's just the concept that not every student has to go to college, not that every student is not to just to admit to college. Um, and it's making kids aware of the opportunity. Um, beyond that college track, and I think this is going to be a perfect fit for that particular thing for those kind of years and students to see other opportunities. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So um, I just go 
questions, I can go back. Please let me know what you need. How do you see it? I got this for you. I'm just going to keep order and channel my inner here. You get to see the franchise is made or like where it's at. Because there's nothing the better than the It's one more fan of um, this is the development. I share how can you do this? You guys in this school district are the for willingness of your administration voting to get to, to do random. Take advantage and take profits from us and vote. I think you say it like anywhere when the people who live in the middle of the campus all the time. So we're like top two in terms of forward thinking and leadership. I can use that to the brand. The reason they came out here to announce the mental health care in the schools, I ain't got a plan for it. We need COVID funds. I get it. You guys get it. I get it. And, and I, you are, you guys are knocking it out of the park. I'm going to tell you, phenomenal. That's me. By people like this, and people who don't work in here, I can do everything in my power to get money. The other thing is, Establish something in the data, lead it to sustainability. I would love to buy this data. It's not just, you know, and I hope this is not about just funny stuff. But we're going to tell it, we will. And I believe this is going to be stuff that we just are doing now. Shh. Everybody's going to be And if you and I would love to be friends with or whatever, <laughs> we're going to be right up. You know, oh, go, go to, you know, any friend. The next in New York City, you know, the kids versus old people. That's not the way it works. So, you have, well, you can please reach out to me. Um, I can have a lot of goals. I can do that. I can do that. You guys are crazy. You're the gold star on the house. Thank you. I can help you. You guys can ask me to run the front edge of the car. You got a front edge of the Thank you. 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 You can go now. You don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Joe and Kate? Sounds like you're doing an awesome job. And it sounds like we got some support at the county level sitting right behind you. So let, let's let's capitalize on this and really make a a uh, uh, a program that we will be proud of and others will want to emulate. So, um, just a couple of other pieces, uh, blowing out the financing a little bit. We're using our debt replacement model for this project, first and foremost. Remember, we're paying off a $10 million mortgage. So, that amount is our seed money. We're using that 1.7 of capital reserve to fund $7 million of the project. Remember, with, with our state aid, we can turn a smaller amount of money into a larger amount of money. And then obviously building aid will, will fund a large portion. And then we will continue to use those annual um, amounts that we put in our capital line to fund the remaining half a million. So we're looking to have a $17.5 million budget. We feel like that's going to give us the flexibility while we're figuring out the agriculture and the, um, the other components that we aren't certain we'll be able to fund, but it will also give us enough to make sure we take care of the roofs and the, the paving that are our top priority. We've reviewed all this, but I just, you know, it's a lot of money, so I want to make sure that we're hitting it one more time. So I don't know if there's any other questions about um, that component. The, the only question was the um, alternate, the alternate that you showed. Correct me if I'm wrong, but those are not prioritized. Correct. We will 
we'll be looking to do the ag facility infrastructure. We just aren't sure if that will be able to happen before this project using some capital outlay money so that we would be ready if we had enough to put a greenhouse up earlier. So we're looking at timing, but that's a significant priority. The second priority for me is getting the rest of those windows done at DMS and then addressing our locker room. We're hoping that the bid climate, when this all comes to fruition, will be a little bit better. I mean, right now, roofing and asphalt, it's not a great time to do either one of those things or bid either one of those things. But I'm thinking the market's going to settle down a little bit post pandemic. We also do have escalation built into this project, conservative escalation, meaning probably higher than what it will be. So we're, we, we are protected, which is sort of how we've moved forward, you know, for the last several years with projects, make sure we're fiscally protected so we aren't creating, you know, stress in our community over the fact that we don't have enough money to fund what we said we're going to fund, but we're also hoping it'll give us enough to tick off some of those alternates. We're always going to put forth projects with alternates, some of which we don't feel like we'll be able to capture. But remember what those alternates do when we put them on the street for bid. We actually can see what contractors will bid to do that work. And it gives us a great window into the future. So we have a great idea about those DMS locker rooms, what it would cost you know, to do the work down there. And in fact, over time, we've determined we don't have to do as much infrastructure work as we thought. So sometimes waiting to do something actually nets you a better result. I mean, not that we always have a crystal ball to know when that is, but it's not bad to have alternates that you can't fund, I guess is my point. You know, it's visionary to do that. Any other questions about the building project? All right, uh, mission, vision, values, discussion. So I did reshare this document that you have had, um, but God knows we've been so focused on COVID and other things. Um, we, sitting at my place over there, there's a framed version and something we, we made sure every, every staff member had when we originally launched. And it's something that we regular, regularly speak of. So if you recall uh, a couple of years ago, we pulled together a group of school community members. And we, we tasked them with coming up with a mission statement and statement of values. And what came out of that committee that some folks around this table were part of, um, and some not around this table were part of, uh, was this mission statement graphic. So our mission statement, rather than being a paragraph, it's actually three words, connect, empower, ignite. And it was designed in a way to order those words very strategically. The group wanted to make sure that everyone in the school community understands the first thing we're responsible for is connection. Without connection, nothing else will happen. The second piece is empower, making sure that we're providing opportunities and experiences that empower the people in our district. And you know, for me, what does this mean for me? It means that I need to empower my staff. It means that my staff needs to empower the people they're responsible for, ultimately our students. And what happens when you connect and empower is that there is this igniting process that you can hardly contain. You know, people get excited and passionate and, and actually want to dive in and do things and in some cases are running ahead of you. And that's what we really look for for our students, that they're excited about what the future holds. And I hope to do that for my staff. When I listen to Joe and Caitlin talk about what they're excited for, it makes me happy to know that they've been ignited. And hopefully I've had some small role in igniting their passions so that that um, translates to our kids. So that was the mission statement and the reason those words were chosen and ordered in the way that they were. People felt it was very important to use the block M because they feel like all of this happened with the foundation of academics. And there was a lot of discussion about incorporating a Mustang. And while the symbol of the Mustang is very powerful, 
it also is often associated so closely with athletics. There was a concern that the mission statement would sort of look slanted towards just an athletic program, and that really wasn't what the group wanted. So we can come back to this, but what happened next when we started talking about you know, vision and values, the group felt very strongly about coming up with commitment statements. They wanted to make sure that we were committing to something, that we weren't just saying this is our vision, but this is our commitment. And I, I loved that. I thought this is commitment is such a word of action. You know, you're saying I'm going to do something about this, not just talk about it and paste it on a wall. And so these five commitments were, were what that group came up with. And this was after several meetings of, of generating ideas and distilling ideas. The first is to ensure an environment that's physically, emotionally, and socially safe. And while I hate to say this to you, I asked every single time we came up with a statement, I asked, is this visionary? Because I don't want us committing to what already exists necessarily. And when you ask if something's visionary, what that means is that you have not yet arrived. So as hard as it is to admit that we aren't perfect, we aren't perfect. There are probably people in our midst right now that don't feel emotionally safe or don't feel socially safe. And, and I think we know that, especially after COVID, we probably have a lot more people on that list. So we know that it's our job to find a way to ensure that they can come to that desired state of safety. And, and that means everyone, kids, our staff. The second is cultivating relationships in which everyone is valued and connected. And obviously you can see you know, how the first flows into the second, but it also really reflects that empowerment piece. You know, do, do I have a place here? You know, is there something here for me? And do people value what I have to offer and contribute? Again, staff, kids, you know, how are we making everyone feel here? The next is inspiring adventurous learners to view, to view failure and success as opportunities for growth. This is a packed statement. The group really wanted to incorporate the notion of being adventurous, that whole lifelong learning piece. But I think people feel like saying you're a lifelong learner has become so cliche. While it's true that that's what we want, adventurous really felt like a more exciting and novel way to phrase it. And then of course, viewing failure and success as opportunities for growth, we spent a lot of time talking about the learning process and recognizing that in order to learn and grow, you have to have failure. Very little comes when there is no conflict and conflict is the product of failing and hopefully picking yourself back up again and trying another time. It's obviously the heartbeat of the engineering process. Engineering is a major force in not only the science standards, but also in STEM and the things that we're talking about here tonight. The next piece, collaborating with local and global partners to explore, develop, and share interests. We really want to optimize that notion of service that Joe talked about and developing true partnership where we're working with people, not only in our community, but in the world and recognizing that not only do they have something to offer us and our students, but we and our students have something to offer them. So it's that collaboration and partnership is something that we've already started doing some work on and we're excited to continue. And then the last piece is something that both Joe and Caitlin referenced tonight because they've spent some time really thinking about these commitments because like I said, we talk about them a lot, um, igniting passion through learning by doing. They wanna make sure that they're a major force in getting kids experiences where they can actually take hold of learning experiences, not just talk about the possibility in the future of doing something. So those commitments to me represent some amazing amazing ideas, notions, aspirations. And the last piece that the commission, the committee felt very uh, strongly about was making a statement about achieving these commitments while keeping an eye on using our resources in an efficient and balanced way. 
that we make sure if we want something to happen, that we're allowing for the support and the funding for it to occur, while also keeping an eye on the fact that we can't do everything, but the things that we choose must be done well and must be supported. So that is my reflection from the work that that committee did. Our job tonight was to give you an opportunity to just reflect on these and what they mean to you, leading into our discussion at our next meeting where we're going to brainstorm and generate a list of some ideas that relate to the mission and commitments that you might like to know more about so that we can go on at our next meeting to actually select a focus area. So I'm gonna open the floor to you to reflect. I can move between these two slides if you'd like to further examine either the mission statement or the commitment. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, one thing that really jumped out to me in my work with kids is um, the inspiring adventurous learners um, to view failure and success as opportunities for growth. I think that so often um, kids are afraid to make mistakes and they put so much pressure on themselves and I've seen so many kids who struggle with anxiety and just really creating an environment where it's okay to make mistakes. You know, I say that to kids all the time that it's part of who we are. We all make mistakes and it's okay to make a mistake and really making sure that that's communicated to them on a regular basis because when we have that ability to be vulnerable, that's when we really grow on all levels, socially, emotionally, economically. So I think that's really powerful that that, that was captured. I think a lot of this, like, especially the last statement about how we have to really support these missions and we have to give time to allow these things to happen and if we don't make a commitment to that like it's really hard when you have a teacher or support staff everybody who has a jam-packed day to go okay well now in what you're doing all day with kids figure out a way to make that local and global partnership happen because we want you to do that too so like we really have to invest in giving you guys the opportunity to have time to do these things the other thing, like to stem off of what Christine said, is when you have kids that are afraid to make mistakes because there's a grade attached to everything, and that bad grade means, you know, now I'm not, you know, like these kids, and I totally support the fact that not every kid needs to go to college, and there's a wealth of opportunities for every different child. But when you have kids that are so focused on you know, making the grade because they want to apply to a college or they want to apply for an internship or whatever the case may be. I would love to see classroom opportunities that didn't have grades attached to them. So these kids have less of this. I mean, I get you have to accept that not everything you do is 100 or an A or whatever. And that's great. But I think we have to build to that. We have to give them opportunities to make mistakes and learn that aren't always they're going to go like, oh, I don't know. I tried something new. I took a whatever course that was out of my box, but I ended up getting a C in it. And now that's gonna destroy my team. And now I'm not gonna get that scholarship or I'm not gonna get you know the different section of colleges that I can look at. And that's a really complex issue. And how do you begin to tackle something like that? So, I mean, these, I hope you guys feel like there's ways, I'm glad with Michelle at the top, who is visionary, I believe, and can give somebody, you know, give you guys all the support to take some time where you're not just always with the kids to do your job, but you also have time to develop these ideas and balance one off of one another and come up with ways to, these are big things that we're asked, you know, that are created here. How do you do them on top of what you're already doing? As you, there are certain mandates yeah. and then there's some nice room in those mandates. It'd be nice if there was, it'd be nice if there was a lot more hands on the how are you going to get them to the Yeah, they, we hope to do more Are you doing anything now? Thank you. We haven't started yet. Yeah. 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 We tend to do some sort of with the middle school and baby setting and study for the kind of study grade to you know, study grade or age grade to first grade and they have studied it throughout 
Right now, we're sort of gingerly stepping into the year, and I think as soon as Joe and Caitlin are given some license, I mean, we're still having discussions about doing open houses in person, you know, <laughs> because people are sort of in this state of I'm not sure yet, but believe me, um, when I think of the word ignite, you're looking at it right there, they will be ready to go. <laughs> well, I noticed that you were reading off each of those commitments. Um, we only have three people here tonight, but each one of those commitments was met by the representatives in the in the audience tonight, including not only Caitlin and Joel, but Julie as well, a, a local partner, right, who helps to develop and share the interest. Three people sitting here and every one of those bullets can be ticked off just by the three people sitting here. But I think the biggest challenge is time. Yeah. Like, how do you, yeah, how do you, and, and I really feel like what we also need is the the position that is the facilitator of all of this, that that gets you, that buys you time in KPH, that, that makes those, like, how do you guys have time to do this when you're doing your job? Like, but if you had somebody maybe from, you know, in some kind of, you know, like we have that position where, um the technology support position right so we, we started that a few years ago but this seems like this is a position like i would love to see somebody go like i'm going to be the facilitator to get to promote what you guys have here and how that could be achieved in the classrooms at kch and dms and like a, a pr person so to speak but somebody that's saying listen this is worth the time and let's you know and, and plan it out like the calendar keeper of how to get all this stuff to happen because time is going to be the biggest problem and opening those doors and saying this is worthy of time in your art class curriculum or in your english curriculum or in your whatever because it's all great these are all great ideas but i can see in the practicality of everybody's job and day to day you go, oh yeah that does sound good i'd like to do that but it doesn't happen because how do you fit it in so and there's a couple of um there's a couple of things i'll i'll offer um you're right time is <laughs> it's like our nightmare right all the time um we have shifted uh again i, I don't want to keep blaming covid but covid is to blame for a few things mm -hmm. um we had started you know because i as a leader i i'm responsible to create an environment that i want then created in a classroom right so i um came up with this crazy idea that we would do what I call personalized learning for staff, where they would be able, we all have to do professional learning, right, every year. And there's time for that, that we have built into the schedule. And I said, I think our staff needs an opportunity to figure out what they're passionate about and learn about that and work on that, instead of me telling them what they're gonna be passionate about this year. And then next year, it'll be something different. So we actually launched it, of course, and really got some people excited about some things right before school shut down. So we were rolling and we're really excited that we're bringing that back this year. And we'll be able, and a lot of people remember that. They remember how excited they were. And so Joe and Caitlin will be able to fit into one of those passion strands, you know, maybe the learning by doing, and they'll be able to spend their professional development time instead of doing whatever I might pick for them. They're going to be able to pick that thing that will also lead to these things. So it will give them some of that time. We've also been fortunate 
to have the federal dollars that we have. And Tony and, and the team and I, we earmarked some money for some summer work because some of this can really be dug into over the summer with some planning. And then you can launch because this really is a shift in mindset. It isn't an and, it's a instead of in some cases. Rather than approaching it this way, we need to start thinking differently and approach it this way. And that still takes time, I'm not being Pollyanna. But that money for the expanded summer work right now, we know can happen for two more years. This year, our focus was on, oh my God, where are our kids and what do we need to do to get them where we need them to be? But we're not going to be there next summer in the summer after. We're actually, we're going to position ourselves better in the visioning realm. So I think, you know, I'm thinking about how I can build it in fuse so that we can have that time and that we go through the mindset shift so everybody's thinking this way. It isn't just one person thinking this way. And then we also need to make sure we engage our communications person to be looking for ways to highlight what's happening and connecting it to these things. So you're right, there's a very deliberate approach that needs to be taken to, to launch and move such a lofty initiative. You know, one thing that, um, you know, we've all, COVID sucks, we know it always sucks. But in that, one of the things that I think has come out of COVID that's positive is that board of collaborating with local and local partners is one half of a lot easier that feels is partnering now than it was in March of 2020. Um, everybody has done that now. You know, having a video conference isn't something that is crazy technology and scary, and you're going to see yourself on the screen. People are used to that. And I think that will help, you know, it, it caused mental health issues, but it's also going to help mental health issues because it's opening access to more people. So I think um, the technology that we have now is going to help us with a lot of this stuff. I think the first step is really helpful to figure out how to deal with it. To different people that are like real world, real business and fun kids. That'd be awesome. Just like it's a weekly thing, a monthly thing, a monthly speaker, then it's a hopeful kid or whatever. But I think it's, are these two the only two that are doing this program? No, no, they're they're here because they were talking specifically about eggs. Right. These are the district students. Okay. Can these two, will these two be able to talk to teachers or five teachers or seven or something? Yeah, we are. We, they collaborate with, I mean, Caitlin's perfectly positioned to collaborate with science, but uh, they collaborate now. Um, with all the things that are in the future. Yeah, I don't have We haven't even talked about cross building stuff, but we haven't talked about not doing it either. We just haven't talked about it. So I will definitely put that on my docket to see, you know, some of it is just how are things trending and things seem to be, even though cases are coming in, they seem to be going okay. So maybe we can have a chat about it. We just haven't talked either way, honestly. We've just been trying to get school on this. <laughs> well, whatever it's, for it's worth, we're here. We do embody with what the clock is going out with, and that's with working with my colleagues. And this building and EMS, um, we are by no means the heroes. Um, there are so many people setting an example in every single department and every single building. Um, and, and go back to that comment about time. Of course, time is always a huge issue, um, but I think. You know, this district is what it is because of the, the staff that we have, and each one is going to find the time to make sure that each one of these boxes is checked off, not because it's set by Mr. Grant or what it's because that's what we all signed up to do. Um, I think that's what makes this district so amazing. Um, and again, we're just a small but I really can help us all. Hopefully, that 
much in that depends on what <laughs> um, We're excited to get back to this and um, take some more stuff. So we'll talk about it again during the next meeting. And I would just like to say thank you guys for coming because, like, this to me gets me excited. Like, this is the first time I felt excited about something. He needs going to run again. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's really, really, it, it's refreshing to talk about something that, that goes back to kids. I mean, it, all the stuff, I mean, we're doing things to facilities and COVID, it's all because of kids, but this is really about their learning and their changing who they are as people and exciting them. And this is, I, I like can't say enough thanks to you guys for coming in to, and to put this on the agenda, Michelle. So I really, uh, this is exciting to me, so. Kudos to the two of you, not only for this, but for reaching out to the county for, for assistance and, you know, $10,000 go a long way, so. And I, I will say one more thing. I'm sorry to keep talking. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys ever need help, like I in the past, I have done some grant writing. If you ever feel like that could alleviate some time, that you know, for you guys to do other things, please call me. Like I'm happy to, you know, to dig in and help where I can. So, yeah. I mean, is that saying that? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say you may live yeah. No, I think it's it's important. Stuff, so. We're all on the same team, right? Thank you guys so much. I know you both have little ones at home, so please, if you want to, please click that for your welcome. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Uh, item... Stop all the bad work. Just focus on the good work. <laughs> <laughs> item five resident comments. If it's not yours, there any resident comments? Item six, business, 6.1 approval of CECRA resolution for proposed capital project resolved that the Board of Education approved the State Environmental Quality Review Act resolution for the December 2021 proposed capital improvement project. May I have a motion? Motion, Mark. White? Second. Green? Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. 6.2. Approval, re approval resolution authorizing the appropriation of $1,700,000 from the general fund and the transfer of such funds to the capital reserve fund. Resolved that the Board of Education approves the appropriation of $1,700,000 from the general fund and transfer of such funds to the capital reserve fund. They have a motion. Yes. Okay. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. 6.3 approval resolution authorizing a special district meeting for the purpose of voting on a proposition for reconstruction and renovation of certain district facilities. Resolved that the Board of Education authorizing a special district meeting on December 7th, 2021, for the purpose of voting on a proposition for reconstruction and renovation of certain district facilities. They have a motion. Second. Mike. Mike. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. 6.4 acceptance of gift donation to district. Resolved that the Board of Education accepts $10,000 from the Onondaga County Agriculture Council, Council for equipment for the agriculture program at Marcella School. They have a motion. Yes. Yeah. Janine. Second. Second. Addie. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, item seven, personnel. Resolved that the following personnel items be approved 7.1 to 7.7. And that 7.7 .7 is the extracurricular strength and conditioning, which was the carry in mm -hmm. this evening. They have a motion. Motion. Mike, second. Dean. Questions or comments? What is the SysOps? The SysOps are the first line of tech support defense. So they do some troubleshooting. Kind of the and yeah. all, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Item A, consent agenda. Resolved that the consent agenda consisting of the following items be approved. 8.1 through 8.8. .8. We have a motion. 
Christine, second. Mm -hmm. Janine, any qu questions or comments? Oh. All those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? Carried. Item nine, information items. No information items. No information items. President, comments? <laughs> there are no resident comments. 11, executive session. There is no executive session this evening. Item 12, adjournment resolved that the Board of Education meeting be adjourned. I have a motion. Yes. Addie. <laughs> Second. Mike. White. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Time is 8.01. Can I ask a question that it moved a little too fast before my question, but I just I'm back sorry. back to that 7.6 that was up for that eleven hundred dollar stipend. Like is there at the end of like is there some record keeping of what these folks do and how much time they spend to kind of come up with that figure annually? Uh, good question. This is something that has been in place for quite a long time. I could get back to you and find out how their duties are assigned, but I would hazard a guess that it happens on the ground with, with people in a more organic manner so that it never hits the tech team. Um, but let me, I can get back to you a little more. So. Yeah, and I'm just curious too how that, like with that tech support position that we have as well, like how does that, how is that different? So Katrina is instructional technology integration. Okay. Not to say that she can't do some basic troubleshooting. So I mean, this up some more troubleshooting. Yeah, there, you know, Wi-Fi down. Okay. That's my computer. My down. class can't log in on their phone book. Yeah. Just wonder if there's some way that they do these folks have to document what they've done throughout the year or keep some kind of record keeping. I believe it's more organic, but I will make sure that I say that with your help. Uh, Thank <laughs> you.